Hey everyone, Sam here. Good to see everybody. Let's dive in and get started. Oh. Hey everyone, Sam here. Good to see everybody. Let's dive in and get started. Give me just a second. There we go. All right. Now I think we're set. All right, so today you should be able to see the screen okay, sound should be fine. We are going to discuss why some supply and demand zones work and others don't. So, you know, when I developed the strategy many uh, years ago, it, it back then, uh, all these years in between and now comes down to two things um, when identifying market turning points and market moves. It's structure and location. The thing that has the biggest impact on whether a supplier demand zone is likely to work or not is location. Keep in mind everything we're gonna talk about during this session is equally applicable to any asset class, stocks, futures, forex, options, bonds, cryptocurrency, you name it, and any time frame or financial purpose, day trading, swing trading, longer term investing, uh, whatever. So understand that when it comes to supply and demand, Supply and demand is everywhere, right? So when you think about it, every time there's a trade or transaction that happens in the market, it's because a buyer and a seller agreed on price. Someone bought, someone sold, you have a trade. That's supply and demand. Now, at every price point, really always in every market, if you really think about it, Anytime price moves up a penny in a stock or a tick in a futures market or a pip in a forex market or whatever, it's because of a supply demand imbalance, right? Now, the vast majority of supply and demand imbalances, uh, the pattern on a chart that represents what everyone thinks is supply and demand, uh, most of the time, the imbalance is not big enough uh, for price to turn when price comes back to that level, or at least turn in a big way, okay? So what we wanna focus on today is how to tell that difference. And let's dive in here. We'll probably be together for about 20, 30 minutes. These sessions are meant to be quick and impactful. Take a look. It's important to ask the right question, okay? Now, the two most important questions in trading and investing, where will price turn and where will it move to? The answers are large or significant supply demand imbalances cause prices to turn. The lack of a large supply and demand imbalance facil facilitates price movement. Okay, so what we're looking for, the focus in all of this is on the imbalance. So as far as turning points, we want to know that supply and demand is out of balance in a big way. And where you don't have that, that's typically where prices move quickly through. Now, the most important question is, what does this look like on a price chart? And we're going to get into that in just a few minutes. We'll spend most of our time there. So take a look at these two. And this is a question. Uh, there is uh, a demand zone on the left, right? And there's what looks like a supply zone on the, on the right. Both of those structure-wise look really, really good, right? Nice structure demand zone, nice structure supply zone. But the question that needs to be asked is, what is the likely imbalance? Like how big is the imbalance at this demand or supply zone? Is it a significant imbalance? like that or is it um or is there a lot of demand and a lot of supply meaning a lack of a significant supply demand imbalance the answer in both of these determines whether price is likely to uh turn when it comes back to that level and what do you think 
As far as the demand and the supply zone, are these levels that you would take? Would you buy at that demand zone? Would you sell at that supply zone? Or would you not? But it all comes down to asking the right question, not is that a good demand zone? Is that a good supply zone? Or there's there's demand down there or how much supply is up there? It's both together. It's the imbalance, right? All right, so we're going to come back to this. I'll give you the answer in just a few minutes. And uh, we'll come back to that. Let's learn a little bit more. And uh, so I see somebody typing in the chat. Yeah, these levels look great. Okay, but we'll come back and answer the important question in a few minutes. Because here's the thing. You will see, um, you will see often two, two demand zones on a chart that look absolutely identical. One will work perfect. The other one won't. Why? Because one had a big supply demand imbalance. The other one didn't. But the picture that represents that could look the same. So we have to look at something else, and that's really at the heart of what we're going to talk about today. So make sure you understand the governing dynamics or the basics around all of this. How markets really work is what is key. So we have supply and demand and the middle. Okay. Now supply and demand are potential volume. When we look at the actual volume, we see that at any market, the vast majority of volume or trading activity is always going to be in the middle, right? Understanding what supply actually means, okay, over here, competition to sell. Demand is competition to buy. The reason why so much trading activity takes place in the middle is because that's where current fair value is, where the majority of buyers and sellers agree on price, agree to buy and sell. Okay. So what uh, we designed a long time ago is the location map. Okay. So we call the middle, uh, one of the things we call it, along with uh, fair value, relative balance, whatever you want to call it, but we also call it the novice space because uh, you typically don't want to be entering positions in the novice space. Why? Because there's a lack of a major supply demand imbalance in there. You can buy and sell as much as you want, but trying to catch turning points and manage risk properly in the middle, uh, good luck. It's not easy. Okay. Probability and profit zones are low in the middle. However, out at supply, retail prices, that's where the supply demand imbalance is significant on the supply side. Probability of price turning and profit zones up here are significant. Same thing on the demand side, right? The supply demand imbalance is significant down here, which is why it means probability and profit zone are also significant. So because location is so important, we color code our supply demand zones. Any supply demand zones we find in the middle are typically gray. And we don't take supply demand zones right in the middle like this. That's the no trade zone. But often we'll find supply zones still in the novice space, but closer to supply and demand zones still in the novice space, but closer to demand down here. And those will be gray. Those are lower probability. So typically we reduce position size if you want to take that. Does this make sense? This is just pure supply and demand. We're going to show you how to read it on a price chart to help determine which supply demand zones are going to work and which ones won't. So the big question is, what does this look like on a price chart? Let's just focus on the middle for now. Because that's, uh, you'll see in a minute, that's the key. Everybody's so focused on, oh wait, there's a perfect looking supply zone or demand zone. Nobody focuses on the middle, but the middle is key. You'll, see, you'll understand why. Okay. Relative balance or fair value is represented by the majority of trading activity, like we just looked at with volume, or and um, this wide and whippy trading activity. Think about it. If they're um, not necessarily mark, it's not necessarily, it doesn't have to be sideways. It could be, you know, up, down, could be, uh, well, I'll talk about that in a minute. 
Um, but think about it. In the middle here, if there was a significant supply-demand imbalance, uh, the chart would look nothing like this, right? You'd see very little trading and the price would shoot away like that demand zone down here, okay? So let's really pay attention to this and let's move forward and take a look. Going back to our two examples here, and we're going to look at some, uh, we're going to look at a bunch of trading examples, uh, trading opportunities from uh, this, this past week here. Correct, FX Green, absolutely. So now let's go back here. And now that we just ran through uh, what we did, and hopefully you're starting to understand it. What would you say about that demand zone? Is that a demand zone that is likely to, that we want to take? You want to buy there or no? Whatever market it is, doesn't matter. Do we want to buy that demand zone? And to answer that, think to yourself, based on what we just went over, is there likely to be a large supply-demand imbalance there or no? What do you think? It's a mix. Yes is a lot of yeses, a lot of noes. Okay. What about this supply zone? Would you short a rally into this supply zone? These are pretty perfect looking supply and demand zones. Again, the, the real question is, is there like, based on what you see on the chart, is there likely to be a significant supply and demand zone at that level? And if you're saying no, why? It does all come down to location. All right, take a look. Here's the answer. Neither zone works. Price goes through both of them like they're not even there. Yet they are perfect looking supply and demand zones. Why? They're in the middle. Okay. How could we know that in advance? Well, let's go back. Look to the left of the level. Look at all of the trading activity here. Look at the wide and whippy uh, action of that trading activity, right? Same thing over here. Now, here are those same two levels, and you can see to the left, right? All of this trading activity around these two levels, they're right in the middle, right in the novice space. But again, I'll, I, I, I agree. Those are two very, structure-wise, those levels are great. Location-wise, not acceptable. In fact, in our program, we would never take those as supply and demand zones. Does that make sense? All right, let's keep going. Hopefully this is helpful. Let's take a look at some examples uh, from this week right out of our program. So uh, the chart on the left is right out of one of our live uh, sessions. Um, uh, this one's not from this week, but the, the others will be. But anyway, th I thought this was a good example. This is from a little bit before that. So take a look. Uh, during the session, Jasmine set up for our members uh, supply, demand, and that relative balance or fair value in the middle, the novice space. Because I'm going to introduce something new here. Right? So we want to make sure that our demand zones are below the novice space. Our supply zones are above the novice space for a couple reasons. One, the probability of price turning at these levels is very high, certainly compared to a supplier demand zone that you might find in the middle. Now, think about it. If, this is very important, if you really understand this whole concept of supply, demand, fair value, let's go here. Okay. Uh, here's probably good. This whole concept um, the we're you know in here right uh, here let's go here in the middle this is where the majority agree on price so understand and this is something a lot of you have not maybe considered yet that middle becomes a magnet for price it is the true magnet for price. Prices turn higher at demand, true demand, because there's competition to buy at demand and a significant imbalance. Prices turn lower at true supply zones because there's competition to sell at supply. There's a significant supply-demand imbalance. The middle 
as we said, is where the majority of buyers and sellers agree on price in any market. So that's going to act as a magnet. Think about how that can help us. Okay, let's take a look. So the fact that when price came up to the supply zone, right? This is from our live setup here. When price came up to our supply zone, fair value or uh, the novice space was down here. Okay, because what a lot of people think is, okay, I'm going to sell it supply and buy it demand. But this middle is so important because it literally acts like a magnet to pull price back down to where the majority of people are buying and selling. That's how any market works. So think about it. When it comes to profit zone, and if some of you have you know, watched some, some of the videos and stuff uh, before, you, you kind of know what I'm talking about with this terminology. If you're brand new to this, don't worry about it. There's uh, plenty, of, plenty of videos to watch to get, get the basics down and, and all that. And you can always come to the workshop. It's all explained there. But think about it. If we have like a two or three to one profit zone just back to the middle, think of how powerful that can be, right? Obviously, we want, you know, it's great if price goes all the way back down to demand. And you know, often it will. But when we can have a ideal risk reward scenario just to get back to the middle, okay, that's how you can, um, if you think about how markets really work, that's one way to uh, really improve uh, your, your odds of success. Okay. Let's take a look. Um, so this is the NASDAQ. This is the Qs from this week. We're going to look at some futures markets. We just looked at a, a commodity market. We'll look at uh, ETFs, Forex, whatever. So here is the QQQ from this week. This is the NASDAQ. I don't know if any of you took this trade or not, maybe. Uh, but when we look at the setup, okay, so earlier in the week, uh, this is actually last Friday, the 29th, right? We had price right in the middle. We had our key supply zone up here and our key demand zone down here. But notice the majority of trading was all the way up here. So if price came down to the demand zone, and last Friday we didn't know, you know if or when that would happen, but if it did, we had two big pieces of evidence. One, the demand zone suggested, because of its location and the gap, that there was a significant supply-demand imbalance down here on the demand side. And fair value or uh, relative balance, the novice space was way up here, okay? Demand to supply was offering a $13 profit zone, okay? Uh, yes, rules for Forex is, are exactly the same. We, uh, we focus on Forex a ton. So uh, Sunday, the, this last Sunday into Monday of this week, uh, price just came down into our demand zone. And notice how fast it shoots right back up to relative balance. Does that make sense? It's, those, it's the forces of competition and where the majority agree to buy and sell. Call it fair value, call it relative balance, whatever you want. One of the reasons why we call it the novice space also is because you don't want to enter positions in there. Okay. All right. So here's the uh, same uh, similar opportunity. This was in the NASDAQ futures. Here's the setup on the supply side and the demand side from um, earlier this week. Okay. And uh, you can see all that's happened since then. Uh, the demand side was hit uh, the prior week, right? And then um, and then we reached it again. Uh, this is last uh, Monday, Sunday, Monday evening, uh, Sunday evening, Monday. So we can see down here, notice the demand, two demand zones on top of each other. So two stacks of buy orders on top of each other. And uh, with the strong move up, with fair value at that time being way up here, okay, we conclude based on the supply and demand evidence and just pure supply and demand evidence, nothing else, that the supply demand imbalance is likely to be significant down here. Price comes back the first time, just touches the level and shoots up. Price comes back and when that happens, we, we're fine taking it again and again. 
right? It's not the it's not how many times price comes back to a level. It's how deep price goes into the level. We want to quantify uh, real supply and demand. All right. So um, earlier this week, price came down to the demand zone, and uh, again shoots right back up to uh, this area. Our supply zone was fine too. Again, with all of this uh, trading activity being in the middle, does that make sense? Okay. And it all everything you're seeing here from like this week and all the other examples and every week we're together in these YouTube sessions, it it it's just playing this location map properly. Now, what makes this difficult? is people bring other things into the decision-making process, right? News, there's a lot of news, indicators, oscillators, trend, all this other stuff that has nothing to do with this real supply and demand concept, the actual orders. And the only reason why I have always thought this way is because I happen to be on the trading floor and uh, facilitated institutional order flow. Right, I actually had the orders right in front of me uh, back then when it was paper orders, right? So, um, you know, you could just see it. Okay, so hopefully you're starting to get this. And then, of course, uh, here's one just a couple days ago into today. This is from uh, uh, one of our live sessions two days ago with our members. Okay, this is after the turn. Um, new demand developed in the market right here. Okay. And um, over the last two days, all that's happened in the NASDAQ is prices come down to this demand zone. And the key thing is that the reason why the chart was suggesting that this was a good level is because it's not, one of the reasons was it's not in the middle. We've had a nice rally off of that area. Now, let's move forward and ready for another little test, another little quiz. Well, maybe this isn't exactly a quiz, but take a look at the demand zone on the left. Perfect, uh, not perfect, but really, really good looking demand zone. Okay. And notice how price comes right back to that level and goes through it like it's not even there. Over on the right, a demand zone here that looks almost identical to this one. You see how these two look almost the same? And this one, price comes back and touches the zone and works and turns higher. Why? What's the reason? Take a look at it. Why does this one fail? And why does this one work so well? And they both look the same. What's the difference? The goal is to not, you know, to stop thinking like a retail trader and investor and start thinking like a bank and executing like a bank. There you go. Some of you are getting it. All right. Ready? Let's take a look. Take a look at the left. This demand zone just to the left of it, fair value or novice space was right here. In this one, it was up here. And again, this acts as a magnet. Why does this act as a magnet for price? Because we already know by the time this develops and the, and the entry happens, that the majority of buyers and sellers currently in this market agree on to buy and sell up here, the vast majority. Competition to buy a demand forces price higher, back up to equilibrium, relative balance, whatever you want to call it. Does that make sense? This one is higher here. Here, it's at the same price, uh, level, same price as the level itself. Everybody see the difference? That tells us objectively that there's not a significant supply demand imbalance here. And in this one, there is. The key here though, is to have a razor sharp focus on pure supply and demand, nothing else. 
okay? And again, the challenge is a lot of people have all kinds of different strategies floating around in their head. They add so many different things to just pure supply and demand. Um, no, no volume profile I see in the chat there. No trend, no, none of that stuff. Um, think in terms of demand, wholesale, supply, retail, and the middle. All right. On that note, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, wanted to make this uh, just very impactful. You can um, spend a lot more time on this if you want in the workshop. Um, oh, there's actually one tomorrow. But uh, uh, CN, no, no reason to avoid certain days or times. It's all about where price is with regard to supply, demand, and the middle. Okay. And really the key is just try to stay out of the middle. And the first step in that is learning what the middle looks like. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. All right. Oh, looks like there's the link for the workshop if anybody wants to, uh, you know, take this a little bit deeper um, and look forward to, uh, we'll have more webinars on, I'll do more webinars on these types of topics. I feel like if we do it in kind of little bite-sized chunks, it's easier to understand, you know, and um, supply and demand, it's how markets work. Any market, any time frame, any financial purpose. All right, hopefully that was helpful. Have a fantastic day and weekend, everyone, and we'll see you next time.